friends and welcome to my nest. My name is Kate. So guess what? I came up with an idea. This is completely organic. I am going to do something different. I'm gonna work with panel and I wanna show you another idea on how to work with your panel fabric. That is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make a quilt using this panel, okay? So if you have this panel laying around and you don't know what to do with it or any other panel that you can cut into a certain size or like maybe six and a half, 12 and a half, this video will help you find something to do with that panel that you've been sitting on and you love it, but you don't know what to do with it. So this video will help you use it to create something beautiful today. So this panel, because I, I like the panel, I liked it, I always liked it. And so I bought a fat water bundle of this and it was designed by Cindy Gervais and this was like the panel that goes with it. Today, I'm gonna to be using this um, in coordination with this panel right here. So, and if you're gonna ask me, are you gonna pre-wash? No, I'm not gonna pre-wash. I'm not gonna pre-wash, okay? So, but I will starch my fabric. So I will be using this in coordination with the panel. That's what we're gonna be doing today. I'm gonna to cut this out so you can see my process of cutting it out. So that's what we're going to do right now. The collection for this, it is from the heart. And this panel is Riley Blake, designed by Cindy Gravey from the heart. If you still wanna look on Etsy, you may be able to find it. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is lay this out and put my ruler on top. The scallops on the edges, and then I'm gonna put my ruler, my 12 and a half inch ruler around it, and I'm going to cut. Okay, so there it is right there. This is almost exactly 12 and a half, and I'm trying to fit it as much as I can. So I'm gonna cut around 12 and a half. I'm cutting, and then I'm gonna cut that way. I'm gonna come around this way and cut. I don't want my ruler to move and mess up what I have going on over here. All right, so we have the 12 and a half right here. That's that. For the rest of these, these are going to be six and a half inches. I'm going to get out my six and a half inches ruler. And I already have this already cut. So that way you can kind of see what it's going to look like. So all the little ones will be six and a half. And so that's that. So this is what this is looking like right now. And then I already have this ahead of time. So this is, these are six and a half. So now I'm just going to do my best. Okay, so I cut this out right here and I still have the scallop. So when we sew a quarter inch around, it will look like rickrack on the edges of it. So that's kind of what I'm going for. That's what I'm gonna be doing through the whole thing. I'm gonna cut them all out, okay? It's just kind of like fuzzy cutting. That's what it looks like. I'm just gonna make sure that I have exactly six and a half. I did go on ahead and cut all of the squares out. So these right here are meant to be named labels. So they will all have purpose. And I think that at the end, we can use this as a pillow to complement the quilt. What we have now is the 12 inch like that and then we have these guys right here we have four of each with this and we have 12 and a half inches so this is going to serve as a center of our quilt and these are going to be center of the block and on each corner i'm going to come up with a 12 inch traditional block to go with it using coordinating fabric so that's what we're doing now we're going to start sewing so stay tuned and let's get sewing Okay. All right. So here's what I've done. I completed cutting all of the squares and this right here, I cut six and a half inches around, making sure that this little scallop side is still showing. So when I sew the edges, it'll look like rickrack and it'll just have this little um, curved edges at, on the end of the center of my block. Hope that makes sense. So I have four of the envelope squares and I have four of the telephone squares. And then this right here, you saw me cut. I did the exact same thing like you saw previously. I cut 12 and a half inches square, also making sure that the scallop side are still showing. So I'm gonna sew 
the first block, which is going to be our churn dash. Okay, so the reason why I have chosen to do traditional blocks is because it's been around forever. It's not any block that you have not seen. You can make it whatever you want it to be. These are easy block to create using this panel, right? Because this panel are specific square and they're like six and a half. So you can only do so much with them. And by saying that you kind of have to use a traditional type block with these. So this first one I'm going to sew you, you know, with the churn dash, I'm just doing this organically using a traditional block. Okay. And that's kind of the best I can do right now using these squares because they're six and a half and you can only do so much with them. So let me sew the first block, which is going to be our churn dash. The smaller blocks, all eight of them are going to finish 12 and a half. And I will have the cutout uh, with the measurement uh, on the link down below. So if you have this panel, you can kind of use this idea in your sewing room. And I'm hoping that this will kind of help you out. If you want to do this in strips, you cut this two inches by 26 and then two inches by 26, sew them together and then cut six and a half inches to make the churn dash. But since I miscut, I don't want to waste my fabric. I'm going to sew it this way. So it's going to be written as strips. So it'll be, it'll be easier. So the first thing I'm going to do with this churn dash, I'm just going to sew this like chain piece them before connecting it to the square. So now I have my block right here. So this is the panel piece in the middle and this is the churn dash around it. So you just kind of have to make it work. What I'm going to do now is just sew these together and we have our blocks all completed. Okay. Now this, um, it, this half square triangle right here, this is a three and a half inch half square triangle on all four corners. So what I'm going to do now is just sew all of them together to make this first block. We're going to make a total of five different blocks for this panel quilt. Okay. So I'm just going to come around here and pin. I pin here and I pin right here. So when I co when I sew on this side, I will do the same thing. So that way my seam can be aligned. So here's our first block right here and we would need to make two of them. I'm going to make two of each since I have eight. So I have two of the churn dash. Okay. Completed. So next we're going to make a heart block and I have my background pieces cut out and I have two sets of them. Okay. This right here are going to be two and a half inches square and this one is six and a half inches square. So what we're going to do is bring our telephone. Remember we're making two of each. Okay. So we're going to have our telephone right here and we have here, the side pieces are going to be three and a half by six and a half. Okay. And then we also have another top piece that are going to be three and a half by six and a half as well. So you're going to need four pieces that are going to be three and a half by six and a half. And then this bottom piece right here is going to be three and a half by 12 and a half. Okay. So that's all you're going to need for this. These are the measurement for the print fabric. And then these right here are going to be background, whatever you choose to be background. So you're going to need two, six and a half inches square, and you're going to need four, two and a half inches square to construct this block. So what we're going to do is take our first pieces of three and a half by six and a half. We're going to sew on the corners. Okay. And the reason why I have this laid out like this, so that way I'm not confused is because my fabrics are directional. So I wanted to make sure that I don't mix it up. So now what I'm going to do is just snowball the corners with the background colors. Okay. So now that both pieces are sewn to the corners, I'm just going to piece this two right here together. And then the first part is done. I've sewn this and I've just kind of pressed it open. So the next thing we're doing is sewing the side of the heart. Okay. Making sure that all my pieces are facing the right direction because these are directional. So I have to just pay attention a little bit. Just sew on both sides. So the sides are sewn on. What I'm going to do now is just sew on the bottom. Mind you, these right here, both of these are three and a half by six and a half. And the center piece right here is six and a half. So this bottom piece right here is three and a half by 12 and a half. So I'm just going to sew it on to this. So 
now that the bottom piece is sewn on next is sew on the first part that we made earlier with the two with the top piece i'm going to flip it over and sew it so now that all the pieces are sewn on what i'm going to do now is take our six and a half inch square um, background and sew it onto the bottom corner going from middle right to bottom left okay and i'm going to do that on both sides so i'm just going to go ahead and sew each side on and press as i um, go that way my seams will be flat when i sew on both sides so now the heart is done this is our second block and i have I have two of them. So I have the first heart and the second heart. I also wanted to show you the cutout for the heart, you know, the bottom left of it. So these are my cutout for that. So I'm gonna put it aside and use it for another project. So next we're going to make what I'm calling our medium sore tooth star. So again, our piece is going to be the telephone. We're going to make something that looks like this. Okay, Flying Geese is started with making a rectangle piece of fabric um, it could be whatever background you choose in my case for right now i'm using a white kona fabric and then my corner fabric is going to be my color that i've chosen okay so i'm just going to chain piece through the entire thing and i'll meet you back here So now I have all four of my flying geese completed and I have my background piece right here, which is three and a half inches. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is construct our block. Again, this is the telephone piece and I'm just going to put it to the side. So, and put my side squares on like that. So now what I'm going to do is just construct the block and then we're done. Okay. So after we complete this, we will have one more set of block to go. And so let me just construct this and then we'll do that. So here we are, we have our sore tooth start block completed and I have made two of them. So here's one and two. So these are the two sets right here. We have completed sets of three blocks. Okay. So our next and final block, we're going to be using this piece right here. Okay. So with this block, I'm just going to lay out three and a half inch square. You will need 12 total HST. And for two blocks, you are going to need 24, three and a half inch HST to make both blocks. It's the easiest, simplest block, but it takes some time. So you're just going to lay out the HST and lay out four across the top, then lay out four down each side and four more on the bottom part. After you've done this, you're just going to check your arrangement and make sure is looking pretty good then you're going to sew all the squares together i have chosen to just kind of sew across and the side and i sew on the bottom if you want to repeat and do another block um, instead of this pointy hst block um, you're more than welcome to do so you're going to need to sew two of these blocks for the quilt so what i'm doing now is just um, just finishing up the block. So our last block is completed for this quilt and I'm calling this the pointed star block. If you don't wish to make this, you're more than welcome to make a different block within this quilt. So this is our star block. I have chosen to do the smaller star block in a 12 and a half inch and the larger star block in the center is going to be 24 and a half inches square so that's all i have right now and let's head on over to 
the design board where we are going to see what our quilt is going to look like. Right now, this is the entire quilt all done on the board. And I'm going to step on the screen so I can kind of explain to you what I did and why I did what I did. So let's do that. Here is my entire quilt right here. I went on ahead and put in the center, the big typewriter was 12 and a half inches. So I made it a star block. The reason why is because that was the option that I have available to do the block in. So this right here is the same thing as this. That's why I didn't do this on camera. So this is a 24 inch square block. This is a 12 inch. So this is mini version of this right here. And this is sewn the exact same way. So what I'm going to do is type up the measurement and put it below the video for each block. For example, this HST right here are um, three and a half inches unfinished. So by the time you sew them on, they'll be three inches. And if you don't want to make this gazillion HST, you can do another kind of block. For example, you can make, it'll be kind of tough to make another different block because this is already six and a half inches. Now, if you're not using the panel, you can cut this down to four and a half inches and then make your sides right here like four and a half like kind of like this these are four and a half so you can cut it and make it four and a half versus six and a half the reason why mine is the way it is it's because i have to work with what i have with the panel so that's why these all these cut out had to be six and a half okay and so let's talk about the ohio star the Ohio star was kind of like my go-to block with anything. Like if I'm doing any kind of quilt that I'm making of myself, I always put Ohio star. That is one of my favorite star in quilting of all time. So I put on, I went on ahead and put Ohio star on all four corners of the quilt because I feel like it closed it in. And then I put the heart fabric. I went on ahead and put it in the middle and still work with all the coordinating fabric. And that's pretty much what I did. I think you can see it on, on camera that this is a different kind of white. I think it's an art gallery. Honestly, I was sewing this at night and I didn't realize that this was different and I'm not gonna change it. But by the time I wash it, it's not gonna matter anyway. What I did with the borders is cut the border at two and a half inches and all four. All in all, the measurement for this quilt is 50 and a half inches square. Now, I know you're gonna ask me, what are you gonna use for your border and your back? So I've had this for a while. I wanna open it up so you guys can see. This is a Zen Chic line and I believe is the all red. It's been around for a while. This is what I was gonna use for binding right here. It's a red polka dot. I'm not sure if you can see it close up. It's, it's a red and white polka dot. And it's the best red for this. And this is all I have left from it. Not very much, but enough to make a binding with. So that's what the binding is going to be. I was also thinking about putting an inner, oh, an outer border of this fabric right here. So I'm going to let you be the judge. I've not put it on yet because I need you guys to tell me because you guys are always right. So I want you to be the judge if I should put a outer border but i think this is a little too red or take some from here and use some of this as part of the outer border so i want you guys to kind of be the judge this one right here or this one right here so this will be border one or border number two so that's kind of where i am right now i can take some from this this is a lot of fabric i think it's like five yards so i can take some from here and put it on the border if that's what you guys choose or that's what I kind of look at and see if it looks right. This is my panel quilt number two for 2024. This is just to bring you ideas. Making this panel quilt is just to encourage and inspire you to use your panel. If you have a panel laying around in your sewing room, sometimes you don't know what to do with it. And I thought I didn't know what to do with this. And I just kind of like was sitting here one day and I thought, well, I can't, I can work with it and try to see what I can do. What I did was cut out a piece and then do a test block to see if they will work. And they did. So, so you can just kind of use this as an inspiration to use your panels. I wanted to also share with you guys that, hey, you can do something with your panel. So this is what I've done with mine. I will tell you what the measurements are right now in case you do want to make it. This right here is a three and a half inches um, strip. This is three and a half by 30. And then this is three and a half by 24 the sashing right here are two, in, two inches 
right here and all my sashing are two and a half and then my borders are two and a half and then my borders are also two and a half these are the only one that are two inches right here because I have to make the math work so this is just very organic it was just a little bit of quilt math and a little bit of girl math to come up with a quilt like this so that's all I have for you today. I hope this have encouraged and inspired you to take your panels and make a beautiful quilt. And if you have not subscribed yet, please make sure you subscribe down below. And I would love to see you in my next video. You have a great day. Bye. I have thread all over me. I have thread all the time.